Morning everyone, May 12th, garden tour. It's getting ready to rain, so I won't make this too long, but I had to show you this bloom. This is why we grow roses. This is Sheila's Perfume. It's a Floribunda, a really, really nice rose. Excellent coloring. Um, as a Floribunda, the blooms can be a little smaller, but still, that is outstanding. The point of this video, show you a couple of the new blooms that just opened up since yesterday's rose tour. I won't show you every little bud talk a little bit about putting down a pre-emergent and the fact <clears throat> that we're getting some rain finally and we'll also talk about my biggest nemesis, nemesis in the garden which are thrips another rose that opened up um, really yesterday afternoon I would have done this video yesterday evening but I want to get some spray down and this just doesn't do it justice in fact I got some spray residue on it um, but this is Gemini it's one of the parents to um, Crescendo, just a beautiful, beautiful rose. The other one I wanted to show you, um, they're not quite open that much yet, uh, but still you can tell the coloring on them is outstanding. Uh, that is um, Jewel Grace, really, really nice rose. So we do have some rain today. We should get more than a half inch of rain. So yesterday I did my weekly spraying. Um, in this case, I used Cleary's and Manzate. Cleary's is a systemic, Manzate is a contact, and I rotate Cleary's and Propoconazole because they're different fungicide categories. The other thing I wanted to show you is the biggest nemesis in the garden that I have is Thrips. They like light colored blooms and they will make them look pretty terrible. So the first couple crescendos I had in the other garden didn't look so good. They haven't gotten this one yet, but let's see if we can find some. It's a beautiful bloom. This is one of the parents to Gemini. But as I pull this back, you might see these little brown bugs down in there moving around. See that? I don't know if you can make out those tiny bugs moving around. Uh, and they leave those marks that you see, those brown marks. So I'm gonna have to start spraying for this. I usually don't like to spray insecticides until um, I have an issue, but comment below, what do you do for thrips? I had a few in New York, but never, ever, ever this many. Um, and it's not just this year, every year I'm struggling with this. Um, I do have something called Conserve that tends to work well, but I just hadn't stuck with it. We have a lot of cotton and farm crops around us. I'm sorry for the shaky camera. I wanna show you these thrips, but you can see them moving around and then there's dark brown marks. That's the damage they do. So they make light color blooms just look terrible. And, and I compete in row shows, so there's no way that would make it. But they're so bad on my whites and yellows sometimes, I wouldn't even give these flowers to neighbors. Uh, and I'll show you the example. Um, they seem to be especially bad this year. I haven't sprayed any insecticides yet. Um, hoping some of the natural predators would help me out. But look how bad that bloom looks from the outside. You see that brown? discoloration this is silver cream that is thrip damage and again you can see the brown on the petals of the damage on the inside so in the past and you can see them moving around in the past I have done orthene and different sprays um, used a little dropper and went down into the bloom itself I'll do that for rose shows but I'm not exhibiting this year because there aren't any rose shows so I'm just kind of letting things go a little bit but I'm gonna have to do something because you can clearly see the thrip damage, the thrips moving around, and the brown of the rose. And it's just terrible when you have a nice looking garden with a lot of promise. They can, at the very least, make the blooms look ugly on the inside. And then when they get really bad, they can make them look terrible from the outside as well. I noticed it on some of my bushes, even Yolande de Aragon, they were so deformed from the thip, thrip damage, they didn't really open up. So we're gonna have to tackle that. Show you one more bloom and then talk about what I did in the garden. This is just a vibrant orange. This is folklore, really, really nice. And the best bloom is hiding down in here, there. It's a little crinkle from the rain and so forth. It usually has better form, but usually you'll see your first couple blooms on a bush are not the best in the year. And then the, the next few in that first cycle tend to be the best all year. Um, but you can tell that plant is really healthy. Any of this white you see on the leaves, that's that manzate or clearies um, preparing for the rain that we're supposed to get. So we're going to get rain. 
Uh, so I hustled out here yesterday, put some pre-emergent down on the lawn. That's why it has like a greenish tint because I use a marker dye for that. Here I just dumped a little bit more for to show you, uh, you know, what the color is. But if you look really, really carefully at the mulch, you can see these yellow specks. That is snapshot. That is for ornamental beds. So I did one cup per 100 square feet, which is roughly the size of my rose beds. Uh, we've been in a drought here in eastern North Carolina. This needs to be watered in. Um, if it had lasted much longer, I would have hand watered it in. But even with these rose beds, that can be difficult to, you know, it's one thing to water a rose bush, but to cover the whole area in between can take some time. So I usually like to put this down before a uh, good rain. So that's it from the garden. I showed you the, the bad, the, fr the thrips. I like to be real with you. Um, this garden may look really good from a distance, and it is, but we are always dealing with issues from the beginner gardener to the experienced gardener. You can see overall, everything's looking good growth-wise, but we do have to tackle some thrips. And as far as the weeds go, that pre-emergent that I put down was done in February, and now it's done in May, and that'll be it for the year. The February application prevented spring weeds, and this will prevent weeds um, from germinating through midsummer. Um, it's helped tremendous amount. You can see that I don't have a lot of weeds in the garden. A few I can either pluck or shoot with Roundup. And then the tough one, the pre-emergent doesn't prevent, is this nut sedge. So I've been slowly, slowly spraying that with Roundup, and you can see it slowly is withering it away. Nut sedge is a very tough weed to get rid of. Sometimes you have to hand pull it. The reason why I am not yet is it has little um, bulbs that are underground. Unless you get those two, it'll just come right back. So I'm trying to, quote unquote, permanently kill it with regards to the Roundup. So that's it. We'll await the rain here in the garden. It should be, make everything look really good. And hopefully we get that rain so it washes in the pre-emergent on the lawn and the rose beds. Comment below, be especially curious. Do you have thrips in the garden? This by far is the worst I've ever had them anywhere I've lived. Um, almost to the point where if I had to do it over again, I may just plant darker colored roses because they don't impact those as much. Um, but it's hard to not have yellows and whites in your garden for variety. Have a good one. As always, I appreciate the new subscribers. We'll have to do a special video. Um, I see that we're up around 400 now, which is uh, really, really good to uh, share the um, excitement of growing roses. One just caught my eye. Doesn't do it justice on this uh, camera phone, uh, but this is Claire Elise. Really, really nice bloom. And this one is a hybrid tea from John Smith. Good growing rose as well. Take care, everyone.